He is a former Olympian and was one of the premier amateur fighters in the world throughout the 1990s. Among his many accomplishments, he seized the U.S. Junior Championships at 132 pounds to become the youngest fighter ever to win the U.S. Championships. He is a three-time world champion and the youngest junior middleweight champion in boxing. Welcome to Title Unboxed, Ferocious Fernando Vargas. Welcome to Title Unboxed. With more than 40 years of experience in the fight game, our host, Doug Ward, will be covering every corner of the ring as we get comfortable between the ropes. We'll talk with both the lesser knowns and the legends, discuss boxing's rich history and current state of the game. We'll also look at today's latest innovations, equipment breakdowns, and insights you won't uncover anywhere else. Join us now as we take a look inside Title Unboxed. Carlos, welcome to Title Unboxed. Thank you for having me, big bro. It's good to see you. It's it's been a crazy year, and you're oh, no man. you've had no exceptions. I know you. The gym flooded. You've been on again, off again with the boys and fights and tournaments, and uh, you know you had the virus early on. A little crazy. To say the least, you know this has been a horrible year to say the least. A very challenging year to be, to say the least. You know um. Uh, my my gym got flooded. My gym got flooded. My um, you know, and um, the landlord is dragging his feet for, for to fix it, and it's not my building. Right. Um, you know, the floor would destroy the concrete, and there's moisture in the concrete. So then you know, then I go, you know, to then I end up getting COVID. Uh, earlier, earlier uh, me and my wife were down for like two months. Um, so, you know, it's definitely been a challenging year. Um, we're trying to make the most of it, you know, thank God, it, you know, Christmas Eve today and, you know, um, we start 2020, 21, hopefully on a, on a, on a different step. Well, it, it's bound to be better. <laughs> Anything's better than this year. Right. But then, you know, I'm a little, then I'm a little scared because they said that they, they found a new, a new, a new virus. A new strain, yeah. I don't, I don't know if you, if you, if you heard of that. I did. But they have a new virus, a new virus, and I'm, I'm like, we, we have enough with this one. Yeah, we, the old, what the old one's been more than we can handle. The old, the, the, <laughs> the, old, the old one was, was has killed so many I people, know, man, and know. you know, definitely, you know, my condolences to the Garcia family. You know, they do. Man, you know, you know my Hefe, the my, which is like my dog, like my yeah. father. I call him Hefe, which is boss in Spanish, which is like my um, Hefe is for for his Mexican his dad. Yeah, sad. And so you know, yeah, man, he, my my um, you know my my trainer's uh, wife, which is Robert Garcia's mom, Mikey Garcia's mom, passed away from COVID. Yeah. So man, this is just my condolences to the Garcia family. My heart's with you guys, and you know I call. I, I I've been calling Garcia every for like two three weeks because I want to see how because he had COVID. Uh -huh. He had COVID too, but he oh, stayed yeah. home and and then uh, he had COVID and he was like, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, and and um you know later on when when he got better, he just told me you know what. I just, you know, told everybody I was good, but I was, I was feeling like I was dying already. Oh my God! And so, you know, he made it through, and but, but his wife didn't, and it's, and she was in the hospital, and he wasn't. So, it's just a difficult time right now for, for, for everybody. You know, yeah. it's definitely not 2020. You know, sucked yeah. seriously. Yeah. So, well, it's bound to get better. Um, you know, I do want to, I want to talk to you about. Um, you mentioned um, Eduardo Garcia and in, in, in boxing, and I know he was kind of your mentor, and he got you into it started. And I want to talk to you about your first recollection of of, of boxing and your introduction. But you were fighting was no stranger to you. I mean, you fought all the way growing up, right? I mean, I thought you. Well, I think you'd even told me stories of guys knocking on your door, like, "Hey, Vargas, yeah. this kid wants to fight yeah. you." And, but, yeah. Well, you know, I, before I knew how to box, I I, I knew how to street fight. And my tío Mario, you know, taught me how to street fight when I was a kid. And so, you know, I had a reputation in school that I could fight. 
because I learned how to sweep and I picked it up real quick, you know what I mean? And it was like easy for me, you know? And so I fight big guys, talk, you know, small guys and or whatever, whoever wanted to mess with me. Yeah. And I never really messed with nobody. I, I never was with that, that bully. I never was that dude that tried to pick on people. Uh, I'd mess up people that try to mess with me or, you know, would be talking smack, you know, talking mess about me. Mm -hmm. So I learned how to street fight. My two Mario told me how to street fight. But then um, one day when I was suspended for school for fighting, I was watching TV and I saw amateur boxing on Jones Intercape on Ringside Boxing Challenge. I'll never forget it. Oh, really? Because a few months later, I was on Ringside Boxing Challenge yeah. fighting Bobby Campbell and giving him standing eight count and going through three minute rounds for, you know, as a 12 year old kid. So I was, you know, I, I, when I saw it, I said, What is this? I could do this. I found out where La Colonia Boxing Gym was. Um, I lived in the south side of Oxnard. Yep. So it took me an hour to walk three miles as a 12 year old kid, but nothing was going to stop me. You know, I didn't have the support, and, you know, that, that you know, that usually other kids have that, you know, their parents are going to take them to, 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 to the gym. I didn't have that. So, you know, I, I, I walked to the gym. I did whatever I needed to do to get to the boxing gym. And my life changed. In four years, I broke history. Yeah. You know, from starting at 12 years, 12 years old, I became the youngest national champion at 16. And, uh, and uh, you know, national champion at 132 pounds where, you know, I fought men and which my record can never be broken because they changed it now to 17, I think now. Yeah, yeah. You have to be to, to enter the open division as a, as a, as a, as an amateur. And so, you know, um, but I didn't play when it came to boxing. I told my, my, I tell my kids that all the time, I go, you gotta understand that. You know, from me not knowing how to throw a jab or right hand, I became four years. I became the youngest national champion of boxing because I didn't play boxing. Yeah, I didn't play this. This wasn't like a, like a, like something that I was just gonna hang out and just do. I said no. My life changes. Like I was a kid that was locked up in juvenile hall, hundreds of hours for community service for batteries and thefts. That when I found boxing, my life changed. My mom said, if you get in trouble at school, you break the law, you go to jail, you're not going to go boxing. I, I quit messing around. I quit, <laughs> you know, being running the street amok. I, I quit, you know, um, you know, I, I'm not going to say I quit fighting in the street, but because, you know, when they, when they, when they look for you, they're going to, they're going to find you. Right. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I wasn't going to back down from a fight. So, um, you know, that was, that was just me, but you know, my life changed when, 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 you know, when I found boxing and, you know, and, and that's why I have my gym the way in the hood, because it's where it's needed. It, you know, for the Vitalist Fighting yeah. Foundation, giving inner city kids a fighting chance, you know, f it helps kids, you know, because, you know, a lot of these kids don't have nowhere to go. You know, I, I when you have time and, on your hands and, and you're like one of these kids that are, one of these baby kids. Yeah. I was like a baby kid. I was like always getting in trouble, bro, going stealing, or going stealing, you know, stealing bikes, um, stealing, you know, just being a, a crazy kid, crazy kid. Yeah. You know, and and I, and I got locked up, and you know, and you know, when my life changed, when I saw amateur boxing and Jones Intercaper, and I said, I'm gonna, this, is, I, I know this is what I'm supposed to do. Well, you. you your success early on was because you were so disciplined and dedicated. What do you think it was about boxing that like that struck you, that struck a nerve for you in your heart and your soul, and you're like so dedicated to it? Well, what, what, what I loved about it was like man on man combat. Mm -hmm. It's like what did what do what do you say? Put up your dukes. Yeah, put up your dukes. You know, to somebody on the industry, put up your dukes mm -hmm. or let's go. You know what I mean? So. It's the purest form of a, of what a real man, you know, displays, and that's the 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 you know the the confidence of knowing that he can throw hands, yeah. and so and not being scared of anybody. So, um, I think that 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 if I didn't fight boxing, I would have been locked up in jail for life or or, or dead. You know what I mean? But I let I'm glad, I'm grateful that I that that. I found boxing because I got close to God. I started walking the church so that God can help me and God bless me to where I'm at today. Yeah.
Awesome. So it's, it was the test, the challenge that appealed to you. Uh, well, you know, I, I never knew that there was boxing for kids. Yeah. I saw that, that uh, I saw I was 12 years old. So I saw Mike Tyson, I saw Vander Holyfield, but those were men winning, you know, fights and having belts and stuff like that. But I didn't know that there was a program for kids. Yeah. And I, I found out what it was the next day. I never let up. I never let up. I said, this is what my life is going to change. I'm going to be, I know that I'm going to be great. Everybody's going to know my name. And, you know, and I was able to do that. Well, and that path led you to, obviously, the 1996 Olympics, which is, I mean, yeah. it was a great Olympic team. You had Floyd Mayweather. You had awesome. You had David Diaz. Me, you had Antonio Tarver. David you had, uh, who am I missing, uh, Nate Jones. Nate Jones, uh, yeah. I mean, it was quite a crew. Yeah, Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, so it was a, a stack of you know, David Diaz, yeah. uh, Terrence Cotton. And, um, you know, just just a, a amazing, uh, amazing team of great fighters. You know what I mean? Uh, Is, what did you learn most from that famous. experience? Being in that in that kind of the spotlight. Wow, it's everything that I ever dreamed of. You know what I mean? I always wanted to everybody to know my name. I wanted everybody to know that, you know, that I could fight and that, that I was bad at it, that I was a, you know, a badass at it. That's what I, I wanted the world to know, you know? And and so when you get on the Olympic team, you know, I was number one, 125, 132, 139, 147. Yeah. Every time that I moved, every time that I moved up, I became number one. Yeah. Not, nobody was going to beat me. It was like, it, 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 you know, it was boxing that wasn't something that I played. So it was something that I, that I, that I did because I knew that I was going to be great in it. It's like, I, I'm never going to quit doing this, but you know, of course, when, when you're a kid, you know, you don't, you don't know what never means, right. but you know, but, but I'm never going to stop doing this. I'm always going to do this. And so, you know, boxing is, uh, has been something that I'll never, that I, that I'll always be part of. I love it. Yeah. Just like you love it, yeah. big bro. Love it. You love it to yeah, this day. You know, it. you have it, you, you yeah. live it. You, you had your gym and you, you, your boxing gym in your own house. Yeah. And it's amazing. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I, I love boxing. I, I, I have uh, boxing gloves, little, little chains. And, and then I have, you know, I, I, I write on my book on a, on my uh, book cover, boxing stuff and boxing gloves. And, you know, it's just like, I, I fell in love with the sport and I said, I'm not, this is gonna be it. This is, this, is, this is gonna change my life. I'm gonna be, one day everybody's gonna know my name. And, you know, because I said, because I, 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 I kept God first and I kept on going to church and God helped me become who I am yeah. today. Well, they say it and it's a little cliche, but it's, it is something about once it gets in your blood, you just you can't shake it. No, and look at my boy, my babies. Like, you know, they're they they they're all fighting. Yeah. You know, Junior just turned pro. Amado's next coming up, and you know, Emiliano. You know, I'm gonna try to shoot him for the 2024 Olympics. Yep. And and like you know, I and people tell me, did you want your kids to fight? I said no, and they go no. I go no, I don't want them to fight. They go, but but you know, my compadre Frankie Casavetti says said it. You know. And said it well, you know, he told me this, he goes, you know, because, you know, whenever, you know, people would tell me, you know, do you want your kids to fight? I said, no. And then like, and then Frankie would be like, but champ, can I, can I ask you a question? I go, yeah, go ahead. He goes, well, how are you going to tell your kids they can't be there like their father? And I said, wow. It's like, you know, yeah. you know, it's true. You can't be like my, you know, it's a tough sport, but it's the best sport in the world. There's no, there's no, you know, you're, 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 it's you and him and that's it. Yeah. And so then, you know, you have a team that's, that's with you and, you know, your trainer, you know, the, the people that are in your corner to help you get physically ready for the fight. But at the end of the day, you're stepping into the ring by yourself yeah. with that dude. Yeah. And so it's either you or him. Yeah. So, and it's a bit purest form of combat is a is the most beautiful it's purest form of combat you know where you know you in a, in, in a fight you're gonna fight in the street you're gonna you're gonna throw hands so same boxing is such is that but with rules and you know with you know you you know knockdowns and you know points and the, the art of boxing it's a sweet science and you know we love it and and it'll be in our veins to 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 the six feet under Unreal. Well, and or eight feet, six feet, or eight feet, six feet. <laughs> you know how big of a shovel you have. 
So <laughs> yeah. it was less than a year after the Olympics. You were pro, turned turn pro, pro. Um, pro, and and it wasn't too long after that before you were fighting Yuri Boy Campus. I mean, that you were on right. a fast track as a as a young fighter. Yeah, I only had fourteen fights, and he had seventy eight, and he had a record of seventy eight and one sixty eight knockouts, yeah. and. Um, you know, nobody gave me a chance to to to, to beat this guy. But Garcia called it this Fernando. Let me tell you something. You have this is this is what you got going for yourself. You have intelligence, boxing IQ. You have great boxing ability. You could take a shot. He goes. The only way that he has a shot is if you stand there to fight with him. If you box him, box circles around this dude. He's not going to be able to touch you. He's going to get so mad. He's going to tell you to come on and stop and, and, and stop and fight. You know, you know, stay put and fight me. And you're going to tell him, no, I'm too smart. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. And guess what? You know what he says? And he's going to quit. I go, what? What do you mean he's going to quit? He goes, he's going to quit. You know why? I don't know why he's going to quit. I go, why? He goes, because he already did it one time. Mm -hmm. If you did it one time, you do it one, two, three, four, five. It comes five. easier. It doesn't matter, you know. It comes yeah. easier. And so, when he, it was like he was a, like a witch doctor because he, and everything in the like in the fifth round, he told me to come sit, stop and fight. I said, Nah, I'm gonna, I'm too smart. Boom, boom, hit him with the one, two, and then, and then he quit. And I was like, Wow. So it was a, an amazing moment for me to become the youngest junior middle champion in boxing yeah. history and. And, you know, it was, you know, Oxnard was never known as boxing. You know, everybody was like, well, what are you going to do when you grow up? I said, I'll become world champion. They go, come on, man. Nobody's ever been world champion out of boxing. All right, wait. But that that being patient, that was probably against your natural instinct. You wanted to fight. You wanted to brawl. So that, what else did, what else did uh, Eduardo Garcia teach you that you've been able to, to bring along, really made you the world champion you were and what you're able to pass on to your kids? Well, he, he always told me, primero inteligente, luego valiente, Fernando. First intelligent, then you can be, be, then you can be brave. Because he goes, you're, you're going to be brave regardless, because that's what, that's your DNA. So he goes, first, you got to use your intelligence. He goes, why is Floyd considered the best fighter of this generation? Because he beat people with his intelligence, yeah. not with his boxing right. power or, you know, or, 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 or this or that. It was always his intelligence. He goes, so, you know... Garcia always, my heifer always sent us that way, sent Robert my, that way, sent me that way. And he goes, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, first be intelligent, then be brave. And that's what we did. Yeah. Well, and then shortly after that, you fought um, Ike Corte, which is a memorable yeah. fight. And I think you told me once yeah. that um, you feel, looking back on your career, that you were at your peak that night, that nobody could have beat you that Fernando Vargas that night. No, my, my, no, the, my, my, the, nobody gonna beat me against Raul Marquez. Oh, that the one, okay. The way I thought that okay. night, I peaked that night. I was like, I couldn't wait to get in there. I'm like, I felt so good. Like, 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 you know, the weight wasn't that hard to make and I did it and I, and I ran hard. And I remember like, like, the, the one when I went on, you know, I ate all my food and I was good. But what's crazy is like, after I ate my food, I was good. And then I went to bed and I woke up. It was time to eat again. And then, and then um, when I was uh, in, the, in the dressing room warming up, I felt this like, whew, it's like, I never felt it before in any other fight. Really? But one time there, I was like, I feel so good. I can't wait. To, I'm going to smash this dude. I, I can't wait to get in there. And I went in there. I really wanted to go in there and just let go everything go. But the, the I was able to, to, to like hold that, 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 that ferocity mm -hmm. for, for till, till the end. Like when it was time for, when I heard him and then I, then I just finished him. Well, it's beautiful in that fight. You know, it's funny. You look at people talk about Vasily Lomachenko and him doing, using all the angles right, right. and pulling the hand down and coming in over the top. Yeah, he did that stuff yeah, way back yeah. then, and people act like it's way something new. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, all those tricks. And in my FMO, and, and Garcia told yeah. me that. 
I did that to to Mike. I did that to Ross Thompson. Mm -hmm. I did that to, uh, to I did that to a few fighters. You know what I mean? And so, um, the thing is that you know when when he was training me, because he goes, "This is what you're gonna do." He goes, "Look, put your hands up," and then, and he goes, "When you you're gonna do this, you're gonna put down uh, is some one of the." For the fighter's card, yeah. one of the gloves down, and come over the top of the ran, come put down the ran, come over the left hook. And so I was like, wow, and I started doing it. And so, you know, when this little Macheco did was the first year, crazy. Go back and check out my fights, yeah. and you'll see that I did that. I even did that to Chivata Flores, too, mm -hmm. in the corner. Boom, boom, boom. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, it's. Uh, all top by the heavy, the big G, the you know my heavy, the the the, the boss of all bosses, man. The heavy senior Lothar Garcia. Well, people need to go back and look at those, some of those fights on YouTube. There's a there's some lessons to be yeah, learned in there. That's that's school right there. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, so now it's the new the you know my my lineage, my my boys, and and I'm excited, yeah. you know, just to be part of this. You know, it's um, you know, when you never had a father, it's a it's a beautiful thing to be living right now, like. To me, it's like just messing around with my kids make me laugh. Like, like you know, just the way we, we, we joke around with one another. And it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing, big bro, because, you know, it's like, man, you know, um, you're like, man, this is how I would have been if I would have had yeah. a dad. You know, but, 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 I, but, but you know, it's, it's like a bittersweet, yeah. but it's a definitely more sweet than bitter because I'm, I'm living my life through the kids. I'm living my childhood that I wish right. I had through my kids' eyes. And so it's a beautiful moment, beautiful moment for me when being in the corner and they're holding on. Like, I remember Emiliano, first national, you know, we're in the finals and he's and he's in the corner looking at me and he's holding on to every word that's coming out of my yeah. mouth. Like, I know that he knows that that I know what I'm talking about and he knows that I'm that, that if he listens to me, I'm going to guide him to his first national champion. And that, that right there, that, that, that was a moment where, man, I, I almost broke, I broke down after the yeah. fight. I was like, wow, it's beautiful because, you know, he was holding on to every word that came out of my mouth and, and I saw myself, like, I, I, I saw myself like, like I was um, Emiliano and that was my dad. And he was telling me how to fight. And you know, so even though I didn't have that, yeah, I, I was living it through his eyes and it was such a beautiful moment for yeah. me. It's, it's, t it's tough seeing him get hit, but the it, sharing that passion together and being in the gym and spending all that time, it's, it's priceless. I mean, there, you, well, I mean, I don't, don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the key, right? You know, I mean, I don't, don't get it. Key. Yeah, I mean, I don't, don't get it. Well, yeah. So, you know, um, no, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful thing that to, to be living this with my kids and, you know, um, I'm not perfect. I'm not a perfect dad. And, you know, and, you know, um, you know, yeah, I try to do the best that I to my abilities. And I talk to Garcia all the time, which is, which is to me, the ultimate man, the ultimate father. And he's always, you know, guided me right and, you know, give me the best advice possible to, to guide my, 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 my life as a man and I, my life as a father and my life as a right. trainer, you know? So, you know, I, I talked to him for all aspects. Well, you brought him up. So we have to go back to uh, Ross Thompson because that, that was a memorable fight for many reasons. Is that, is that the nastiest we've ever seen for Nato Vargas? Uh, yeah, I think that's a nasty, you know, like, cause, uh, you know, I'm, I'm respectful to everybody that's respectful to me, but this guy, this chump trying to, you know, come up and, and disrespect, you know, just, just, just disrespect me and, and I and he sucker punched me at the yeah, press conference exactly. and he busted my lip. And so this is, this is the only reason that I did what I did in the fight, because what I did in the fight was spit on him. And that, why did I spit on him? Because... And people tell me, why did you spit on him after you knocked him down? I said, because he made it a street fight outside the ring. I made a street fight yeah. inside the ring. I wouldn't have done that if he would have, if he would have been respectful. Right. I wouldn't have just done that, that, that. To me, people that do that are punks. You know, you, you, already, you already beat him. Why you got to spit <laughs> on him? No, I spit on him. I spit on him because he sucker punched me at the press conference. And I didn't even want to touch gloves in the middle of the ring. And I saw in his eyes, he was scared. 
And I knew I was gonna I was gonna knock him out. And I said to myself, because I, I, I was my, my lip was busted the, from from the night before. And I said to myself, in um in in, uh, in my room when I when when I was already gonna go to sleep, I saw my lip and it was busted. I said, I said when I knock him down, I'm gonna spit in his face and tell oh, him to get out. She planned on it. You it was premeditated. I planned it. It was premeditated, like you wouldn't believe. It had to be because I was because you know I, I said I'm gonna make him remember yeah. me because you know nobody ever sucker punched me at his press conference and he was the first and the only one to yeah. ever did that. So I said I'm gonna make him remember me for the rest of his life, and he always gonna remember. People are gonna always remember him that he got spit on because <laughs> but, but because hey you made it a street fight outside the ring. I'm making a street but I was inside the ring. And I told my kids, you respect everybody till they disrespect you. The second that a man disrespects you, that's where you have to show what type of man you yeah. are. Because at the end of the day, every man deserves respect because they're men. Because regardless of whether he's a coward or he's not, whether he's scared or he's not, whether he's willing to fight you or he's not, because every man deserves respect. The second a man disrespects you, you disrespect him to the fifth yep. power, because you know you 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 gave everybody respect to you, got disrespected, and that's what I tell my boys. And he he, dis he disrespected me, so I, I I had to show him, you know, the disrespect that was given to me outside the uh, uh, at the press conference was what I did to him in well, in, in the ring. A, made a memorable boxing moment anyway. I want to I want to touch on one more fight before we move on. I, I want to bring the boys in so we can talk about the Vargas family and that unit and how okay. it works. But yeah. I do I don't know that I've ever told yeah. you this. Of course, I've seen local fights growing up as a kid. The first major fight I ever went to was uh, Fernando Vargas versus Felix Trinidad, and it spoiled me for life. Yeah. I thought every fight was going to be that amazing <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> but that that was a mm. knockdown drag out. Um, what well, what do you remember most about that fight? I don't. <laughs> people, people, tell, people, people tell me. Do you remember this? Do you remember? I go. I don't even remember bits and pieces really? of this fight. That's the only fight that I remember bits and pieces of. Like, and like you know, I I never was done as amateur as a right. pro, and I went down five times, and I got up off five times, be, because. But I don't remember, but it does not surprise uh -huh. me because I know the type of man I am. That's just the man I am. You know, if I get knocked down, I'm going to get up. A, if, I, if, if, I get, if I got knocked down 10 times, I'm going to get up yeah. 15 times. It doesn't matter. I'm, as long as there's a, there's a breath in my, in, my, in my body, as long as there's, there's a heartbeat in my chest, I'm going to get up trying to fight because that's just um, what I, who I am as a person. I'm a fighter. You know, I fight for everything that I had in my life. I fight for everything that I have. And that I literally fought for everything that I have. And, you know, with, the, yeah. with these. And so I remember, like, getting hit, and I, and I just heard an explosion. Bah! I go, what the? You can see my face. Like, yeah, what, what am I doing? And here? so on the way to the hospital, on the way to the hospital, Oh, my wife was on the, was in the ambulance with me. And then I go, baby, did it look bad when I went down? She goes, you got up every time. I said, what? How many times did I go down? She goes, baby. She, she, she goes, baby, relax. I go, how many times did I go? She goes, no, I'm not going to tell you. Don't worry about it. You know, that's not, that's not relevant. Yeah. It doesn't, you don't need to know. And I go, I go, baby, I felt like I was getting hit with bats. I go, this guy's not human. She goes, he goes, what do you mean? I go, I felt like I was getting hit with bats. I never, it's never in my life I've ever felt anybody mm -hmm. hit like that. And so, do you remember knocking him down? You know, I, re I remember knocking him down. Then I got hit in the nuts. And, you know, and then my nuts were, you know, my nut area was very yeah. bruised, to say the least. I was lucky to have still have kids. <laughs> You know, because I mean, I don't know how many times and low, but I feel that you know, the momentum when I knocked him down, I would, I was, I jumped on him and then he hit me low and then that, that really, you know, switched over, you know, the, 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 the flow yeah. of the fight. Would you feel like heading into that? I mean, in retrospect, I guess that if you'd had had a little bit more time, a little bit more experience, the outcome of that fight would have been different. 
Yep, but that but that's what champions yeah. do. They fight champions. I wanted to unify yeah. the division, you know. And I was a young champion. When you're a young champion, but look, let me just tell you this: all the 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 good, the bad, the ugly that I've learned in my career is to help my kids. I'm gonna tell my kids like this: you don't need to fight these big old names right, right away. I will add 14 fights, and I fought Yuri yeah. Combos to you know when the youngest gentleman with champion crown, you know. But I need you know I didn't need to do that. You know, but but I did it, and I didn't need to fight I right. next. You know, but but you know, I didn't need to fight you, Raul Marquez, the former world champion. But you know, I, when you're a champion, you believe in yourself right. like you're a champion, and that and that's why you have the champion mind train of thought. It's like, no, nah, I'm a champion. Let's go. You're not gonna whoop me. I'm gonna whoop you. You know what I mean? So it's always, it's always gonna be that. And so maybe, maybe I did jump into the, those fights a little too early. But I say this, I did the good right. with the bad. I beat five world champions, Jordi Pacampas, Raul Marquez, Winky Red, I Corte, Javier Casego, five world champions. And the four that beat me, can not walk away saying it was easy. Should I have a lot? Let me tell you something, this is, a, no, this is another thing. After I became a little bit of a, of, of a, of a loose cannon, after, my fight with Trinidad, I became a little bit of a loose cannon. You know, I started drinking, and, and I think that when my promoters started seeing that, my manager started seeing that, and I'm not going to say who my manager was, but mm-hmm. people don't know who it was. Um, they started bringing me these right. big fights. And a champion, I'm, a, I'm not going to say no right. to a big fight. I can whoop them. Let's go. Because you're a champion, and you have, a, you have champion heart, and you have a champion mm-hmm. mindset. So you're not gonna say no to those big fights. And so I think that that's how they were able to, they're, they're like, this guy's a loose cannon. I got, we're gonna get our money before, before, before he right, self-destructs. Right. And, I, and, I, and I really think that's what yeah. they did. Well, you still have an amazing re- resume. And the great thing is, like you say, good, bad, or indifferent, you learn from it. And look at the, look at the amount of knowledge your kids are gonna have from your experiences. Yes. They won't have to go through that. Yep. Yep, you know, um, you know, my kids do a lot of the same stuff that I've done, the pulling down the guard because I teach them that, you know, the the body shots, you know, and we're we're Mexican, we love going to the body. So, um, you know, I, all that I learned, the good and the bad, the ugly people, I know that it was God meant it for for me to to help my kids because with their experiences as a fighter. Get them that much further along. Well, with that, why don't we bring those? Why don't we bring the boys in? So we got joining us, we got Amato on uh, Fernando's right there in the blue and Fernando Jr. on the left in the ball cap, not like they need introductions. And, and the youngest, Emiliano, who we spoke about earlier, he's away, uh, he's sparring in California, yeah, right? Yeah, no, Fernando? he's, um, he, this guy, he's, um, took a little vacation. He's, a, no, he's like um, a free spirit, the guy. He just, this guy just oh. gets up and leaves because he goes, I, I'm gonna go to California. I'm like, what the hell? Like. <laughs> You, you got family, you got parents that that, that, that that worry about you. Fool, what's wrong with you? You you you, you called him out. You should have said, yeah, he's out there sparring. Yeah, he's very well, dedicated. You know, he's a free spirit. <laughs> he's, he's out there with my, he's not sparring. He's out there with my compadre, Frankie Casavetes. And so, you know, yeah. it's fine. He's, I he's, think because he had nationals he, coming up. He's earned. Yeah, Nationals coming up, he's a little hurt. Like, he's just upset with amateur boxing. He's like, screw this. I don't even want to, like, you know, it, I get it. He was working hard for it, and then COVID pushed it back and postponed yeah. it. And so. It's a mess right now. Yeah. 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 Well, let's start out with you, Junior, because you're just coming off of a, a kind of a milestone yeah. <laughs> in your in your career so far. Um, and you're coming off a first round stoppage in your first professional fight. How was that? Did it did it meet exceed your expectations? Uh, you know what? It's just is you will never know until like you you're in there. You know what I mean? Like your dad could prepare you right. and could tell you everything. But um, you know, I saw two people come out in stretchers before I even walked out, so I knew I heard Ooh. people like throwing up a little bit. This is and, real. You know, um, yep. this isn't amateur boxing no more. So we're definitely excited. Uh, it was something new for me. Yeah. Um, I wanted to knock out, but kind of left with a good chip on my shoulder for me to train harder. And uh, we got some sure. good things coming up. I'm going to be in a camp. Uh, I forget the dude's name. I don't want to uh, miss say it, but he's 18-0, 18, 18 knockouts, and I believe he's fighting for a world title. So there's just opportunity off, after opportunity. I'm just excited for uh, our future, for myself and all my brothers. Yeah. 
Amazing. Well, Amato, what's it like? I mean, we talk about this a lot, but what are the pros and cons of being a Vargas boy growing up, having those big shoes to fill? What are the pros and cons? Well, there's got to be good things. And there's got to be things that, you know, you're a target, right? Of course. There, you know, ever since somewhere we were amateurs as well, we would win fights. It would be because, you know, it's Fernando Vargas' sons and yada, yada, yada. We paid the judges. We, we heard it all. But, you know, at the end of the day, my dad is who he is. And my dad got very big shoes to fill. But I said yep. this in many interviews. I just want to be the best. I'm out of Vargas I could be possibly. Junior's trying to be the best. Fernando Vargas Jr. possibly. And, uh, you know, my, my dad is who he is. And it's a, it's a good Good thing to have my dad on our on our team. Well, you you certainly have knowledge and experience on your side, you guys. But I know you guys realize that you understand the depth and breadth of what he's gone through and how that plays into your future. Yeah, definitely. So, Junior, I've, I, I want, you're since you're the oldest and you've been in this the longest. Um, I do want to talk about. I, I've always felt like when you grow up in a boxing gym you have a little bit of an edge on everybody else because it becomes, it's such, such a natural setting that it's just, it comes more, more natural to you. Yeah. It becomes, it's a little bit easier for you than the guy that's just coming in off the street, whether he's seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 years old and has never put on a pair of gloves before. How do you feel about that? Is there something to being raised in a boxing environment? Uh, definitely. I, I honestly owe it to, to, uh, to the pedigree right here, right next to me, you know, um, my mom likes to take a little bit of the credit. She's like, hey, you know, I had my part in there too, you know. Uh, he gets his boxing IQ for me. I'm smart. And we're like, okay, mom, like, we get it. You know what I'm saying? That's Every funny. fight that my mom and dad have fought, he loses every time. So he's not winning that one fight, Doug. Let me tell you. She win. She win, baby. But you know what? So honestly, to think about it is just, yeah, of course, you know, uh, to have a father that reached the highest pinnacle in the sport, <clears> of course you could feel a little bit of pressure. I mean, I'd be lying if I say I didn't. But, but like my dad said, he would just always tell me, like, son, they're going to talk about you, whether you're doing great, whether you get a first round knockout like that Berlanga guy. My dad really likes him. Um, they're always going to have. He's a good Yeah, player. he is. He follows us. He, and he's, he yeah. us. He, he, he's a, I like that guy. Berlanga, shout out to Berlanga. He's doing his thing. And, you know, the Vargas brothers, we support that guy. He's doing his thing, man. Yeah. But do you get where I'm coming from, Doug? Like, like even with a dude like him, who who who's probably gonna get prospect of the year for every single fight, not going past the first round, people are still right. talking about all oh, we want to see more rounds. I mean, it's like right. he's getting never, the job done. It's never gonna be enough. Yeah, it's never gonna be good yeah. enough for anybody. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, uh, I'll make sure that my boys stay focused. I'm gonna make sure that they stay focused because yep. at the end of the day, the ones stepping into the ring, not me. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna know they're gonna be 100. Yeah. percent So. You know, they could talk, let them talk, because at the end of the day, they're promoting you. They're still talking about you, whether it be good or bad, as long as they talk about you. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's, that's the right philosophy. Um, and well, and social media makes it even more prevalent. Right. Where it's like, you know, everything you post, people are commenting good yeah, and bad, man. and you got the people you got hating on guys. you regardless. You got tough guys behind, you know, we got uh, Keyword. Keyword. Key, 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 what? Keyword. Key key yeah, Keyword. Key key Triple OG. Oh, Keyword. Cholo. Yeah. <laughs> and then you look at their profile, it's like, Zero posts, following a, a million yeah. Uh, yeah, followers yeah. too. Like what? And like no, yeah. yeah, no picture, yeah. no picture. Like if you're gonna say, so, I forgot. I think it was Mike Tyson. He said social media made a generation where you could say whatever you want behind a keyboard. Well, I get yeah. punched yeah. in the face. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> serious. It's true. Does that ever get under your skin though? Just a little bit. Cause you guys are pretty active on social. Go ahead. I mean, you can well, answer me, that. Well, me, well, me. Let me just tell you this. On my page, I don't. I do not condone anybody talking smack on my page. He just so guess what? Him. I just yeah. go to the page, block, delete. delete, block, delete. I That's just, it. I I'm not here to entertain yeah, yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. any negativity, because at the end yeah. of the day, you're on my page. Yeah, I don't even know who the hell right. you are. <laughs> you're, 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 and you want to come and talk to my page and talk smack? No. Nah. I go to your page, yeah, yeah. go to the yeah. thing, delete, no block. And that's it. And you guess what? Yeah. That's the last that I ever see of you. But they just want a reaction from you. They want like, a reaction. You'll, sometimes you'll respond. My, yeah. my dad will be petty and just respond to somebody. Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, Trump, it was all love. Like, okay, now you want to switch it. Like, yeah. Which uh, one is it? I just, wanna, I just wanted to see what you say. If you yeah. say something, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> 
So, so Amato, what's next for you? You, you? You've had a good amateur career. Juniors turned pro. Uh, being there with him in that environment, did that, did that light your fire a little bit? Man, just seeing my brother, just seeing how, you know, how good he looked. He was all ripped. You know, the, the, him fighting on T, TV and, you know, my dad, you know, he was a little nervous, but, you know. No, I wasn't. All right. Well, he, we, my, I just seen my, seeing my brother, it was just like, man, it, it's very motivating. It's like, man, yeah. I can't wait till, you know, it's time for me to go. And yeah. it's, and it's coming yeah. very, very short. And he's looking good. He just got done sparring. He, I'm, this, I'm always letting his hands go, sitting on shots and, his, his power is coming in real, yeah, real, real nice. Real, yeah. my, brother, yeah. my brother and my dad, they're my biggest supporters. And now they want to box. Yeah. Yeah, they, I thought they wanted to bang with them. Now they're, now they're trying to box. So, and usually this kid, his name is Max. He usually box, you know, uh, you know, his box great is really fighter. great. He's like 9-0, he's, he's five good. knockouts, yeah. six knockouts, good fighter. But he, he's, a, he's improved by, you know, leaps and bounds. So I'm, but, I'm real but, proud but, of my brothers. The only way you can get better is by sparring the, the sit, best competition. The yeah. Yeah, and that when I was a kid, that's when my effort took me. Me and Robert took us to go spar. You know, I sparred Oscar. I sparred yeah. Jordi Bocamba. Yeah. Jordi Bocamba yeah. playing with me for for yeah. a little bit. And, and, then then and then what happened? And then what happened? And then what happened? And then you saw go. I right. sparred. You know, uh, Pepe Riley. He was an Olympian too. That's what uh, I love about my dad. Um, so so you need you need to have that type of sparring and work because yeah. that's the only way you're gonna get better. If you're gonna yeah. if you sport bums, you're gonna be a bum. Exactly. You might be better the best bum, but but dudes, you're, dudes love it. to get in the gym and just beat up on somebody. Yeah. Well, exactly. That doesn't do anything but pump your ego up a little bit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So Amato, you are turning pro? Yes. Has that been announced? Can that be announced? Twenty twenty one. It's gonna I think today is a new year. And uh definitely excited until it's official, then we'll be able to announce it. But uh, yeah, definitely excited. I'm training really hard and uh, making sure my weight's nice and low and excited for this new year to come. Awesome, looking forward to it. So what do you guys do? Do you guys, obviously your dad's a big motivator. What do you do to motivate each other? Do you call each other out? Junior, do you say, Amato, you gotta step it up. Yeah, you're, you're uh, slacking. Uh, that's, okay. that's a given. I mean, honestly, like in a sport where it's super lonely, like my dad says boxing is the loneliest sport in the world. To have brothers that are, because I tell Malo, bro, you, you know, you should have done this, you should have done that. You didn't look like the way you're supposed to. But when he's on it, you know, we we also, you know, want to tell them uh, uh, each other when we're doing good. When Emmy isn't right. looking as sharp, because you know Emmy's really sharp, and we know the way he fights. If he's getting touched up a little more than he yeah. should, then you know, we'll, we'll tell you're each our worst other. critic, you know. So it has to be, you have to be that. But that yeah. drives us to just be that much better because. We're not gonna lie to each other. What are we lying to each other for? If we, didn't, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I know at the end of the day, my brothers want the best and ha have the best interest for myself and our family. So, and that's our circle. You know, we learned that from my dad in his career. You know, your circle, you feel it could be every every friend and every person you see in the boxing world. And we're so glad we met you, Doug. You're such a cool dude. You're such a cool person since day one. Yeah, and same. we're appreciative for you. I just want to let you know, since the amateurs always, you know, our whole gym's titled out. So. We're very grateful for you and your, you know, your beautiful family and wife and um, beautiful people. Well, same. You know, the feelings mutual. Friendships like that come once in a lifetime. I agree. I agree. So, Amato, if there's one thing, again, out of all the, your dad's experience, if there's one thing he's passed on to you or taught you or told you, is there is there one thing that just like that you hang your hat on that? That's your that's your driving force. That is your your kind of hits hits home with you. My dad always tells me. Son, you're talented, but hard work always means talent when yep. talent don't work exactly. hard. And that's yeah. something my dad has always, you know, instilled in us. You know, we work hard. We're going to we're going to have the fruits of our labor. And, you know, my dad did the hard part. He made the Vargas name. Now it's our time yeah. to to take over. I love it. Junior, how about you? Is there something that like has really that he's taught you or said to you that really resonates and just you're reminded of it on a regular basis um yeah just you know don't don't feel everybody wants to see you succeed and that i mean it's it's sad to say but you know you look at like as far as ryan garcia coming up and this fight coming up with luke Cal oh you know he's gonna he's never fought anybody like luke Cal i mean i just feel 
yes, there's a lot of people that support you, but you can't feel everybody, you know, wants the best interest for you. But as long as, you know, your family loves you, your circle, uh, uh, you know, is, 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 is giving you positive, you know, affirmations or telling you when you're slipping up, you know, then, then I'm happy, yeah. you know, because that's who we do it for. We do it for each other. I don't have kids. My mama doesn't have kids. Thank God. Um, <laughs> but you know, Fernando's like, good yeah, thing. Good, good, one thing good I thing. did right. <laughs> one thing we did right. <laughs> Not gonna work. No kids. No kids. Not but what did you have kids, Dad? What, uh, what? But see, I wanted. Yeah, I, was was really I, wanted Let's not I wanted to have kids. That's Let's something different. And I was already yeah. making three thousand yeah. dollars a month yeah. from the United States Committee because I was number one in the United States from. One twenty-five to one to, to one forty-seven years of age. I'm one forty-seven pounds. So I was already getting paid three thousand dollars a month from the Olympic Committee since I was sixteen. And and I told your mom, I want I want I want to have I want to have kids with you. She goes, I'm too young. I understand that, but I want to have kids with you. I want you to be the mother of my baby. She goes, but I'm too young. I understand that, but <laughs> yeah, no I, kids, I never no had kids. a father. I never had a father, but. <laughs> She then she goes okay after I, she didn't want to she didn't want to she didn't want to then yeah. I talked to her and she, then she said okay promise me one thing I said whatever you want what she goes promise me that our family will always be together because I don't want to raise my son by myself and I said right. I promise you through all the good and bad because I put that woman through bad and a lot of bad and I'm not perfect because I don't want everybody to think oh Fernando you're the best we love you and you know, we just love the way you just you know take care of your family and you love your wife and your kids Fernando. and your daughter we just love you oh wow well, you wouldn't have loved me the dude that I used to be well you know yeah. that you know so I thank God for 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 his mercy and I thank God for the the woman that he put in my life because 27 years this woman put up with me. This year will be 27 yeah. years. I couldn't do it. Good for her. Good for her. But you, but you also, part of you, you wanted, you, you wanted to be the dad that you didn't have, right? Yeah. Yes. That's why. And did I, did I, did I, did I, did I make a lot of mistakes because you're young? Yes. But I, my, 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 my motive was to be the best father that I didn't have. Right. You know what I mean? To, to, yeah. to be the best fathers to my boys and to my to my daughter that I could be. You're that, doing, you know, you're doing and, a good and, job. Well, thank you, you're son. I'm trying my best. Excellent. You know, yeah. I, you know, it's tough when you don't know. Like you don't know because you didn't live it with a, with a father. That oh, man, what do, what do I do? So I called yeah. Big G. Garcia, yeah, what do I what do I do? What do you think I should do? You know, uh, um, you know, Junior's Junior's acting, Junior, Junior, acting up. He's yeah. wearing a mug and and this and that and you know, Amado's not listening either and. You know, and the, you know, Emiliano, he's, he listens, but he, <laughs> hopefully a little bit later, he doesn't start doing, getting crazy too. But, you know, at yeah. the end of the day, that's what I'm here for. I'm their father to try to guide them the best I can, that I can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the end of the day, when, when, we're in, when we're in front of God, I'm going to be like, God, I tried my best. And that's all yeah. I could tell you. Well, we talked to, I talked to Roy Jones a a podcast or two ago and brought up the, his, his relationship with his father. And that didn't work. You know, you see a lot of father and son's teams, some work and some don't. What makes it work for you guys? What do you think you, the, the synergy is that you, are you able to separate your dad now or your trainer now, or, you know, what is it for you guys that makes it work so well? You want to go first? Jim? Yeah. I mean, I think with me is just knowing where you'd mesh and where you don't mesh. And being real with yourself, I think, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, like my dad says, sometimes, like, I don't know what I'm doing either. I'm, I don't know if I'm too cool with you or, you know, yeah. if that's my fault or, you know, I feel with myself, uh, I could want it just my way, you know, and I feel that's my generation. We just feel we know better. And mm -hmm. that's, know, we, a we gotta, that's a junior. Either. Yeah, we, we, try to re junior. we try to reinvent the wheel and, you yeah. know, and, and that's not that's not the way to do things, you know, and like, you know, my dad said I would never even bite my lip at, you know, I'm not out, not bite my lip. I would not, not even, you know, talk back to my trainer. And, you know, I, I fall short in that, you know, when, you know, when I'm cutting weight or different stuff like that, but that's not an excuse. You know, I got to learn when my dad's in the gym, he's my coach. And when we're out of the gym, you know, he's my dad. And and sometimes I know sons and juniors could uh, could could, you know, um, in the gym, you could kind of treat them like however you'd want to, but you can't because right. my dad's a man first before anything. So he always tells me, you know, I'm not going to take nothing in front of no, nobody. We could, there could be no one in the gym. And if you disrespect me, you best believe, you know, 
I'm going to retaliate because that's the type of man my dad is. So, you know, I think just knowing, knowing where, where, where you mess up as a person um, and learning how to, how to grow, you know, we're not perfect, but I think just talking about things and, and uh, you know, sharing each other's heart um, and being with each other, you know, but besides boxing uh, helps our relationship yeah. for sure. For me, for me, yeah, my right. dad, you know, he knows how to take the, you know, his trainer hat on and then, you know, him being my dad. And uh, we have a really tight bond because of boxing. You know, we watch boxing fights, study, you know, son, you could have done this. Uh, you know, my dad would never lie to me and my brothers as well. You know, he, he's always there, supportive. And, you know, I'm grateful to have my dad on my team. And I love the relationship that we have. It's a, you know, father, son. Sometimes, you know, as a family, you know, you, 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 uh, argue as well, but you know, mm -hmm. at, in the end, it's 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 all good. So I'm grateful to have my dad, you know, be in the corner for with us. So a lot of communication and trust. Yeah, and ain't yeah. no one gonna care. If, like Floyd Mayweather Sr. said it. Go ahead, Dan. Ain't no yeah. This is what yeah. Floyd, <laughs> Floyd, Floyd Mayweather Sr. Go said. Ahead. I love this. He, he, you know, Sorry. <laughs> shut up. Don't hurt me. Hey, look, Go so, ahead. So, 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 so we're, uh, you know, together, and uh, we're you know, I, I, and Floyd, we're going to go spar at the Mayweather gym. And so Floyd was there, and I go, Floyd, come here. Tell him, tell, tell him what them tell the young him. bucks. What, what you told me, he goes, you ain't going to be no good if you're not with your daddy. <laughs> tell me who's going to care more about their well-being the right? than their true. daddy. Nobody. Yeah. It's true. I, I don't give a yeah. damn. I told it to my son this. I said, this is Junior. I'm going to be mad, though. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I just went to Junior. Son, if I see you in a fight and you're getting beat up and beat up and beat up and beat up, I'm going to stop it because you're my son first. Right. I don't right. give a damn about I love boxing. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love boxing with all my heart and all my soul and all my passion. But you're my flesh and blood. Yeah, I get you. And I'll go, and I, First and you foremost, can get mad. I'm gonna be but mad. guess what? But guess what? I am going to do something about you getting hurt and that maybe your life can be lost. Right. I'm right. not going to, I'm not here to bury you. You're here to bury me. I'm not going to do that. And I'm going to tell you, son, you're getting hurt. I don't like it. Uh, you're not you're responding. You're not doing what I'm telling you to do, son. I'm going to stop this shit. Yep. Yeah. It's just, I, love I know my dad much. will not want to lose I love you too much and to lose you. We'll be mad. Don't get me wrong. But, because, but you know. Man, it's, it's like yeah. when people tell me, did you want your kids to fight? I said, no. They go, what do you mean no? No. This is the best sport in the world, but the most deadliest sport yep. in the world. So yeah. we're playing with our lives. And if I made my kids fight, I couldn't live with myself if something was to happen to them. And let's say, you know, God forbid that they got knocked out. And they were unconscious yeah. for 10 seconds. 10 seconds is long. Let's say 30 seconds. 30 seconds is a long time to be unconscious. And I'm praying to God. To, for him to go, please, Lord, please wake him up. Please wake him up, oh my God, please. And then he gets up, Junior gets up around my mouth, and he goes, and then he tells me this, see, this is your freaking fault. But I wouldn't do that. No, but no, 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 no. But, but that's why I wouldn't make him fight. Yeah. Because I, because that's what I would have deserved if, right. if I yeah. made him fight, Force because I don't yeah. make him fight. Then I'm like, you, you whether if you, you're going to give it 100% or you're not going to give it 100% at the end of the day, it's going to show in the ring, son. Yep. And yeah, guess what? Sure. I'm gonna, if, I'm, if I'm there and I see that it's not looking good and, and, and you're getting your ass handed to you, I'm going to stop the fight because you're my son first. Right. You're my son first before this. Mm -hmm. You know? And so, you know, I tell him like this, I'm going to be there for the best of your What's better? What's best going to benefit you, right. as my son? You know, and I'm not going to let you get hurt for, for unnecessary punches that 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 later on could hurt you, or you know, later on you're going to slip into consciousness, unconsciousness, and then you, you die. 
Well, more than anybody, you have their best interests at heart, and you also have the experience to come along with that. So they've kind of got the best of both worlds. Yeah. So, you know, I, I you know, it's, it's a blessing to, to have these guys, you know, you know, be my sons and, yeah. and, and do something that, 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 that I love to do. I love to fight, you know, and then I will always be that fighter, whether it be boxing gloves or not, or no boxing gloves, you know, it's just, it's yeah. just a, the, the, the person you are. Yeah. Good people. Good people, all of you. Um, well, as we wrap up here, uh, for all of our listeners and viewers and fans and all the haters out there all across yeah. the board, um, let us know where we can follow all of you guys on, on social. Where are the best place to, to watch your career, watch you grow, watch your developments? Amado? You, you can you you you, 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 Amado, go ahead. So you can follow me at Amado at Vargas on Instagram. But, El Malvado. But, but, for the He's people that, but for the people that can't say Amado, it's Amado, like tomato, tomato. <laughs> no, 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 it's Amado. It's Amado. So you can it's follow me. Fernando. <laughs> you can follow me at Amado or Amado F Vargas. And you can follow my dad at what? You can follow me at, at underscore Fernando. Vargas on Instagram and Twitter, and um, and uh, Facebook is Feroz Fernando Vargas. I'm not I'm maxed out, but you can follow me. I got a few fan pages on there too, and that's what it is. And then Junior, Chumbo. and then uh, you can follow me at Fernando Vargas underscore Junior uh, on Instagram, and then Facebook just Fernando Vargas or Fernando. Oh, Fernando. Fernando. Fernando is cool. And, and then you got you've got the Fighting Foundation. Or Fernando. Oh. No. Uh, that was hilarious. There was a Philando girl. <laughs> they never yeah, saw a Mexican. They're like, what are you? Yeah. I was like, my name is Fernando. And she's like, what she literally that? wrote Starbucks. Oh, we, yeah. we went to Ohio. We went to Ohio. Ohio. Real quick. Real quick. We went to Ohio for a tournament. Boom. We go to a Starbucks. We go. I say Fernando. And she put Philando. Philando. I said, Dad, look at this. That's a new Philando one. Philando Vargas Jr. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. anyway. That's a new Philando one. Philando Vargas Sr. Yeah. And you and you got a you got a social page for the Fighting Foundation too, right? That's yeah. right. At Vargas Boxing, right? Uh, or the foundation? No, the foundation. I got Fernando Vargas Fighting, Fernando Vargas Fighting Fund for on Instagram. At okay. Fernando Vargas Fighting Fund. Awesome. Yeah, so you know, appreciate all the love and support to all the fans, and you know, the legacy continues. Well, That's right. you know, everybody here at Title loves you guys. Uh, That's right. Title Thank people. You know Watch these key guys. Um, the, this right here, what you see in front of you, is the future of boxing. Thank you, one. guys. Yeah. But he's, so, but, he, but, 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 he, but he's here in heart. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll catch him next time. Yeah, absolutely. All right, All right Doug. Take care, guys. I'm thanks for, thanks for coming on. Likewise. Appreciate it. God bless you. You too. Thank you for watching this episode of Title Unboxed. If you're anything like me, you can never get too much boxing. So if you'd like to watch more episodes, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and our Title Boxing YouTube page.